go. George's Marvellous Medicine. Grandma. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a really silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then out she went, closing the black door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair at the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said. And just try to behave yourself for once in a while while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere. So there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as that grisly old grunion of a grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for a start, Grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small, puckered up mouth like a dog's bottom. How much sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked her. One spoon, she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling, griping about something or other. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, Well, how are you this morning, George? Or... Why don't you and I have a game of snakes and ladders? Or, how was school today? She didn't seem to care about any other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma sipped her tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in. George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully in to Grandma. Where's the saucer, she said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched her a saucer. And what about a teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I stirred it very well. I'll stir my own tea, thank you very much, she said. Fetch me a teaspoon. George fetched her a teaspoon. When George's mother or father were home, Grandma never ordered George about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that she began to treat him badly. You know what the matter with you is, said the old woman, staring at George over the rim of her teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing's a nasty, childish habit. But we have to go, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown up. Rubbish, boy, rubbish, she said. Look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. Only very little the old woman answered. I gave up growing when I was extremely small, along with the other nasty, childish habits, like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up any of those things, have you? I'm only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. Grandma, 
George took a good look at Grandma. She certainly was a very tiny person. Her legs were so short she could have had a footstool to put her feet on. And her head only came halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy says it's fine for a man to be tall, George says. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself growing, George asked her. Eat less chocolate, Grandma said. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped. Up instead of down. Grandma sipped some tea, but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said. Always down. Yes, Grandma. And stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh no, I don't like cabbage. George said, it's not what you like or what you don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what's good for you, like that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of cabbage. And if it's got caterpillars in it, so much the better. Ugh, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mummy washes them down the sink, George said. Mummy's as stupid as you are. Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. Slugs too. Oh, not slugs, George cried out. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a live slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma said, I gobble it up quick before it crawls away. Delicious. Mm. She squeezed her lips together so tight that her mouth became a tiny wrinkled hole. Delicious she said again. Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps best of all. They go crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. The old hag grinned, showing those pale brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're lucky, she said, you get a beetle inside the stem of a stick of celery. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You find all sorts of nice things in raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's 